Good evening. My name is Jane Hershey, director of the Early Music Ensemble. Our program tonight, Fortuna Desperata, centers on Italian music from about 1500, when instrumental music was just beginning to come into its own. Instruments were always used in previous centuries for playing for dance, accompanying songs and poems, and improvising in all sorts of settings. In the, during the 1500s, both winds and strings began to develop as families in different sizes to play vocal polyphony, that is, imitative music in parts, in which each voice was independent, but in balance with the others. Our ensemble tonight consists of all the sorts of instruments you might have heard all over Europe, and even in the New World in the 16th and 17th centuries, in churches and in homes, for celebration and amusement. You will hear violas da gamba in three sizes, lute, harp, chamber organ, and harpsichord. Flutes, recorders, solo voices, soft reed instruments, and percussion could have been added on any given occasion, and the music itself could be performed in a wide variety of ways, depending on the occasion, for the convenience and the delight of the players and the singers themselves and for their audience. Tonight you will hear Aditi Perignanan on bass viola da gamba and organ, Sofia Kokotza on harp, harpsichord, bass viol and organ, Bailey Koopman on tenor viol and lute, and Chelsea Way on tenor viol. I will be playing treble viol and bass viola da gamba. So our first piece tonight is the famous Italian song, Fortuna Desperata, or hopeless fortune. It may have been written by Ant Antoine Bunois in the late 1400s and was well known all over Europe in the decades when it first appeared. 34 fascinating settings by different composers of this beautiful song remain today. The song describes <clears throat> the tragedy of the treacherous betrayal of a virtuous woman, her reputation and future damaged by malice and faithlessness. This musical portrayal of loss and misfortune is a reference to all that we have experienced in the past year together. The fragility of life and fortune was familiar in the re Renaissance, as the plague devastated human lives then in a way all too familiar to us today. As instruments came into their own in the 16th century, extra parts were added to vocal models and instrumentalists improvised and added newly composed voices to songs that were already well known and loved. Here we meet our first main composer of the evening, Josquin Desprez. From Josquin's pen, we hear how a well-known song might have been embellished and transformed by instrumentalists 
similar to the treatment today of jazz standards. In our next piece by Josquin, we hear the top two lines exactly as in the Vinois song that we just played, but with a jazzy bass line added, which Sophia will play on the harpsichord. <laughs> Charles Candepré is considered one of the greatest Renaissance composers. He died in 1521, exactly 500 years ago. Although he was a cleric, the majority of his compositions were in service to the king throughout his career, he was also a prolific composer of secular songs. The next song, In Te Domine Speravi, was probably composed during Josquin's time in Italy. It's a beautiful and deeply devotional song with a simple four-part texture. The translation in part is, In thee, O Lord, I have hoped to find mercy forever. The next piece we will play is a remarkable canon, or round, also by Josquin. It was included as a prime example of such a work by the Swiss theoretician Glarianus 
in his treatise, treatise wit written well after Josquin's death. In order to show this beautiful melody, we'll play it once all together, and then we'll break into the two-part canon. Composition in Josquin's works is perhaps one of his last. Scholars disagree about whether it was in fact written by Josquin, but it's an exquisite song about lost love. Aditi will play all four voices on the organ, doubled by the full consort. <laughs> Thank you. 
next piece is J'ai pris amour, an anonymous French song from the 1460s or 70s. Like Fortuna Desperata, it was a famous melody set in many versions by different composers all over Europe, from even as far away as England, where one setting appeared in the songbook of King Henry VIII. Performed vocally, this song is in the rondo form, and its first line translates, I have chosen love willingly to win joy. I shall be happy this summer if I arrive at my goal. To feature this stunning melody, we'll play it all together through once, then we will add the tenor voice, and now on the third time through, we will add the bass voice.
now you will hear one of the many settings of this original rondo. This one by Heinrich Isaac. Isaac Lenchoskin was born in Northern Europe and made his way to Italy for employment. Isaac was not a cleric and unlike Josquin, happily settled in Florence for most of his lifetime. In this setting, you will hear the Je Pris Amour melody played slowly in the top voice, a florid tenor voice in the middle, and a bass voice with an insistent repeating rhythmic pattern based on the opening notes of the melody in an unusual sort of ostinato. Harpsichordists, lutenists, harpists, and organists in the 1500s and 1600s created their own solo settings of the prevailing popular polyphonic vocal pieces of their time. The following two pieces by Josquin are modern keyboard transcriptions by Den Terling in the Renaissance style. They are Recordans Mia Signora, a four-part vocal piece, and La Bernardina, a, th a three-part purely instrumental piece, probably named for a friend or patron of Josquin. So these pieces, again, are both by Josquin, and they will be played on the harpsichord by Sophia. Our thanks go to Frances Fitch, our resident harpsichordist here at Tufts, for her help in preparing these pieces.
say goodbye, we'd like to share three pieces which show a familiar role for instrumentalists in the Renaissance, playing for dancing. The first is passomedia, which means step and a half. The next piece is called Larbocello Ballo Furlano and may refer to an outdoor dance among the hedges, possibly at the home of the Furlano family. We'll play it in two slightly different orchestrations for the two times through.
last piece is from the first collection of printed music from Venice in 1501 called Adhecaton, or A Hundred Favorite Songs. This dance-like piece is based on the refrain of a German folk song. The text of the refrain is, don't rap at the door, my husband isn't at the mill, he's at home. <laughs> 